questions 14 to 17. And the introduction has to be to nomograms. <laughs> nomograms are unusual graphs. These are graphs that usually have uh, three or more variables. And um, so in our new uh, Gold Standard GAMSAT book, uh, this is book two, in the math section chapters we added a whole new section on nomograms, the art of unusual graphs. So we introduce you to the idea of nomograms. And if you've taken the course, you would recognize this graph, um, which uh, is also taught in our um, GAMSAT course. And uh, then, of course, relevant to our current discussion is these um, triangle graphs, very famous. Acer's used them for uh, decades. Um, because it's unusual, you have to learn on the fly, and you have to apply what you learn uh, quickly. Uh, so uh, usually, you know, I suggest that uh, when you look at a triangle graph, uh, you do your best to label the corners uh, where it will be um, what each corner represents, and then it'll be easier for you to understand how to read the graph because uh, you know, for example, if organic matter is at the top, then this means it's complete, 100% uh, organic matter at that point. Uh, in Acer's problem, they did 60%, so they called it pseudo-ternary, or sort of triangle graph. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll see that later. But so, yeah, this would be 100%. And then you read the graph creating lines that are parallel to the base. So this is the top of the triangle, so parallel to the base are the lines for organic matter. Whereas for clay, if the clay is in the left corner, the base of the triangle for clay is over here. So then you're going to read uh, the percentages going right up to the 100% for clay but by starting at 0% on the opposite side. And it's the same thing for sand <coughs> or whatever you have in the bottom right corner. Um, so 0% will be the line opposite and then parallel to the base opposite sand, you'll be reading increasing amounts until you have 100% sand in the corner. And of course, these things get more uh, complex and, um, and yes, even more complex than what you see on the exam. And sometimes Acer goes uh, a little further, but we don't have to deal with that for this particular uh, uh, question. So now, Let's look at uh, questions 14 to 17. I have to admit, uh, you know, I just uh, looked very briefly over the first couple of paragraphs because there's a lot of blah, 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 but nothing that's necessary, um, uh, you know, really for you to solve any of the questions. So <clears throat> that's why looking at the answer choices, uh, the, an the question, sorry, stems, and uh, glancing at the answer choices often helps you just uh, leave a lot of nonsense behind. Um, so the first couple of paragraphs really don't say anything. <clears throat> the only thing that I would do is that uh, when I look at the third paragraph, and it's because I already just briefly looked at the questions, <laughs> and I could see micro and macro and all this, so right away it makes me, the only thing that I key in on, in is the third paragraph where it says region X represents macro. So it makes me put, I would label it uh, during the exam macro. I know my diagram isn't perfect, um, but uh, just gives you a general idea. So, but it would make me label macro and then it says region Y is nano. And so I would label um, nano and then region Z is micro and so I would label it and so it allows me to not waste time look at X and Y and uh, all of that I can see right away as soon as I find my answer I can I can uh, choose uh, the correct answer choice and I could move on and the other thing that I would do uh, right from the beginning is I would label the corners uh, you know, I can see that this is increasing TPGS, so I put TPGS at the top. Uh, increasing DOC NA, so I put DOC NA in the bottom left corner, and increasing uh, TILO, so I put uh, TILO in the bottom right corner. And then this also, again, helps me to uh, focus my eyes on what I need to see. And then uh, finally, for the exam, uh, there are some students who would use their ID cards, uh, often a driver's license, in order to draw straight lines, you know, uh, and it works, okay? So if you're comfortable doing that, that's fine. But uh, 
sometimes uh, on the real exam you're going to be making uh, longer lines or you might be looking for the slope of a line or something that's tangential to a curve or something uh, or projecting something uh, further so or extrapolating and so I think that it's better to have a hexagonal pencil you know those old-fashioned pencils uh, that uh, are hexagonal not a round pencil because round pencils can roll when you're trying to uh, draw a line so a hexagonal pencil will more, more or less sit uh, in position and help you draw lines or pen uh, that's perfectly uh, fine as well but uh, yeah pencil might uh, help you to change your mind <coughs> uh, or, or help help you if you need to change your mind okay so now let's uh, look at some questions uh, and by the way uh, the reason I'm saying that is because rulers as of this time are not permitted for this exam okay so question 14 uh, the formulation presented at point one contains a oh, bit of a typographical uh, issue there, but no problem. So uh, I can see my type, <laughs> my uh, point one, <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to uh, use my rules. So um, uh, one rule is that uh, if I'm going to see the percentage of TPGS, I'm going to go parallel to the base is going to be zero uh, percent TPGS here and now I'm going up to 15% uh, TPGS and 30% TPGS so I've, I've overdone it uh, you know I'm going to go uh, to about uh, here to draw my line across a little high but um, uh, that'll have to do and so that's my um, TPGS level and now I'll do some doc NA uh, so doc NA is here, so I'm going opposite, would be 0% doc NA. Uh, this is 15% doc NA. Whoops, I've already uh, overdone it, so it's going to be less than 15% uh, doc NA. Uh, I guess something like, like that would have, to, would have to do. And uh, let me see, I'll try... I uh, just missed that a little bit uh, also, but anyway, um, I think um, I'm already uh, able to say the answer um, for a number of reasons. Okay, so first of all, uh, you can see that uh, this is going to be 15%, uh, so there's going to be 20% somewhere here, and this is just a little bit over 20%, mm, so 21%. Uh, uh, TPGS this is increasing TPGS so 21% TPGS that makes sense to me and then uh, here's 15% DOC NA see this is DOC NA 15 30 45 this is 15% DOC NA so it's a little bit less than that so 13% DOC NA sounds good to me and uh, if I wanted to draw another line which I I don't need to because th and this is another question that Acer can ask they can see whether or not you are able to logically determine that uh, the sum of the three different components will always sum to the maximum number here at 60%. Usually in a normal ternary uh, diagram it's 100%, but um, in this case it's 60%. But that you see that A plus B plus C must equal 60. So that's another type of uh, question that they, they can ask, which uh, they haven't in this instance. And so uh, it's not necessary. Once you've seen two, uh, components it's not necessary to draw the third because it has to be um, a number that adds to 60 uh, but uh, if you look at uh, Tylo which is over here and this is increasing Tylo so this is 60% Tylo this is going to be 45% uh, Tylo and this is going to be 30% Tylo going across like this so you can see that number one is less than 30% uh, Tylo it's less than 30% Tylo because it's over there so <coughs> uh, 14 the answer is A and uh, now we can go on to question 15. So 15, uh, formulation P contains 15% Tylo. So here's Tylo, here's increasing Tylo, 15% Tylo is going to be uh, right here, and 30% uh, Tylo which is here so remember I'm drawing a line that's opposite and by the way pause at any time uh, so that you can retry questions if you didn't get it right the first time so you can pause and then try and try and then listen some more so I'm gonna go uh, for the 15% uh, Tylo uh, line 
so it's uh, 50 percent so here's zero percent tylo and so i'm going to move up to 15 percent tylo uh, so always parallel to the base for tylo and so it goes across so i'm sure you you're, you're starting to get the hang of it you're you're seeing how uh, it's going from 15% to 45% because that's the difference here, eh? 15% anyway. And so that's 15% Tylo. And now I'm going to go to 30% Tylo. So that's going to go from 30 to 30 because I'm always going parallel to the base in these uh, ternary diagrams. So here's 50% uh, Tylo and here's 30% Tylo. And you can see that it both uh, incorporate the region of the graph that is micro. So both uh, P, because this, uh, we were told, 15% uh, was P, and this one was Q. So both P and Q incorporate the area of micro. So 15, the answer is C. Both P and Q could be micro emulsions. They could also be, they could both be nano, but uh, they could also both be micro. But it's certainly not the case that they're macro, because neither at this level uh, represent uh, macro. So that's why <coughs> answer choices A, B, and D are incorrect, and answer choice C uh, must be correct. So then moving on to uh, question 16, formulations containing at least 40% DOC NA. So here's DOC NA, here's increasing amounts of DOC NA. So uh, to talk about 40%, uh, always going to the base of, of DOC NA, this is the base, so this is uh, going to be 15% uh, DOC NA. This is going to be 30% DOC NA. Here's 45% DOC NA. So it's going to be between uh, 30 and uh, 45%. And so I'm looking for 40, at least uh, 40%. So if I uh, draw that line, and um, here we go, uh, draw a line for somewhere around 40 percent doc NA. Mm, I probably drew it too too high a little bit, but uh, anyway. Um, so if I'm looking, formulation containing at least 40 percent doc NA can only be, well, look, it, even if I drew it a little bit uh, lower down uh, like this or something like that, just a little bit lower down, it's macro and nothing else. There's no nano, there's no micro. 40% uh, doc NA is macro. And so um, uh, 16 is certainly B. Now 17, uh, which of the following uh, maximum proportion doc NA? So uh, again, we're looking at, doc, uh, you know, Acer did that on purpose again. They made us look. <laughs> they, they just made us uh, work out something for doc NA at 40%. And now uh, they're asking what is the maximum proportion of DOC NA in the formulation that could form a micro emulsion. So here's the micro emulsion. We just have to back it up, back it up, back it up uh, so that we can incorporate this uh, part of the line for uh, the micro emulsion. And uh, then we would see that that lines up pretty well with the 30% line uh, for uh, doc NA. So, of course, you know, I didn't do a great job here drawing, but uh, mm, da, 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 more or less, uh, if in doubt, thicken the line, something like that. <laughs> so, so if you draw the line uh, for 30% for doc NA, parallel to the base of doc NA, doc NA at the top, uh, then you'll see that uh, it, at micro, it pretty much um, just maxes out there perfectly. And so uh, 17, uh, the answer is 30%. I put some uh, uh, references here for the uh, GAMSAT math chapters in the new edition, of course, because uh, these were all things added to new new edition books because, um, you know, when, uh, when Acer has any um, new trends uh, that we are following, we will always incorporate them in, in new, new editions. We never try to repeat questions. We try to repeat reasoning uh, that you, uh, so that you can practice, develop your reasoning, and so on. And so uh, one of the things, of course, we did for the, for the new uh, 10 exam book, of course, we have triangle graphs. We have, and this one for clay and sand, we have some for, uh, 
for phospholipids and, and bile salts. Uh, this is in the Fifth Heaps book. But also, I, I put here as a reference, we have uh, lots of uh, physics videos that do graph analysis, and we have something called Biology Chapter Zero on the website, which is associated with the book. And Biology Chapter Zero has over 50 graphs. It has, uh, I mean, over 50 multiple choice questions based on uh, GAMSAC graph analysis. And that includes ternary diagrams and, and some complicated things. Um, and of course, the HEAPS book. So with all of that uh, practice, I think that uh, you'll be in good stead.